Before we begin, um, I want to acknowledge with deep sadness uh, the passing of a uh, fellow minister and friend and supporter, Dar Shepherdson, the Bishop of Canada, who has been struggling with many health uh, issues the past couple of years and who passed away uh, yesterday. And so our, um, our prayers and our condolences go out to his family and his friends and indeed the whole church here in Canada. So I want to extend greetings to one and all and welcome to Beyond the Walls, a global ministry of center place and community of Christ in Canada. We have arrived at the third of our seven Sundays of experiencing together the sacred story of Easter, which corresponds today with the start of a new month. And so in our tradition and community of Christ, we are celebrating a communion Sunday as Jesus and the disciples share in the initiation of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. When you study history, you inevitably discover that nothing comes from nothing. The flow of time is marked by both continuity and change. And so while there are always innovations, the innovations are inevitably born out of the context of the time. People are reacting to what went before and adapting their inheritance to the new conditions with which they find themselves. We saw this clearly a few weeks ago when John the Baptist took the practice of mikvah bathing for ritual purity, which had already existed in the Judaism of his era, and repurposed it as a new spiritual practice with the goal of wiping away sin, that which separates us from God. As baptism, the ritual marked the symbolic death of the old life, the person who goes under the water and is then reborn anew. Today, Jesus is doing something very similar. He and the disciples are participating in one of the central rites of Second Temple Judaism, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, or Passover. By Jesus' day, this meal was associated with the Exodus story, when the Israelites daubed the blood of a sacrificial lamb on their door frames so that the destroying angel would pass by their homes during that last plague brought upon the firstborn of Egypt. However, the ritual almost certainly predates the creation of the Exodus story, Canaanite paganism required that the firstborn of every womb be sacrificed to the gods, and this tragically included infant sacrifice. Religious reformers in ancient Israel wanted to stamp out this practice, insisting that the true Lord, Yahweh, required instead that the firstborn children be redeemed, that is, uh, you offer a substitute sacrifice. Thus, the true purpose of the story of Abraham's sacrifice in Isaac is not God testing Abraham's faith. Rather, it's to provide an example to the pagan peoples of the time. God forbids human sacrifice. God is offering a substitute. Nevertheless, the previous commandment was deeply ingrained and people lived in fear that the angel of death or the god of death would exact vengeance. And for this reason, the blood of the sacrificial animal was painted on the door as proof that the children inside had been properly redeemed and could be kept safe. Continuity and change. In this way, a ritual whose ancient origins and original purpose had actually already been forgotten was part of the inheritance 
of Jesus and his disciples. He now further repurposes the Passover meal, creating the sacrament of communion. This is my body. This is my blood. In the symbolism of the Last Supper, Jesus is identifying himself as the sacrifice that redeems not just the firstborn of Israel, but all of God's children. Today we participate in the gift that Christ gives. When we share the sacred meal, we eat the bread and we drink the wine in remembrance of Christ's everlasting sacrifice. Simultaneously in eating together of the bread and the wine, we become one body, covenanting to live out Christ's mission in the world. And so to begin, we go now live to Rogers, Arkansas, where Mary Akers is here to read our call to worship. Mary, we are so happy to have you with us on Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. I'm very excited to be here to share with you today. Our call to worship today, taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 17 through 19, continues the Holy Week narrative as the disciples make preparations to celebrate the Passover, setting the stage for the Last Supper. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Amen. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, Help us know, O God, your presence, let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story, till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to Arkansas, 
we head over to Kansas, to El Dorado, where Cecilia Hausman is here to offer our invocation. Cecilia, thank you for being with us today on Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. It's a joy to be here. Let us pray. Loving God, we are thankful for the opportunity to come together in this time, in this way, to share in community, and to hear once again about the love you have for each one of us. Help us open our hearts and minds to make ourselves vulnerable to your spirit. You showed the disciples vulnerability as you stooped to wash their feet. How might we have the courage to do the same with our friends and neighbors? As we prepare to partake of communion today, may we receive inspiration from today's message to create space for each person at your table and find new ways to bring about a more inclusive community. Grace us with your peace so we may share it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. live to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where Corleen McLean is here to teach our lesson of the Living Church. Corleen, welcome back to Beyond the Walls. Thanks, John. It's really lovely to be back with you here this morning. This is my body, whether it is called the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, or Communion, the sacrament that is the focus of our service today is the core spiritual practice at the heart of the Christian community in the present and throughout the many centuries dating back to the time of the first disciples. Today in Community of Christ, we are able to celebrate this sacrament together in real time from multiple remote locations brought together through technology and the Holy Spirit. This is because all the essential elements of the sacrament are fulfilled in this practice. That is, one, we are sharing a sacred symbolic meal in community. Two, the ritual includes emblems, a component of solid food and a component of liquid, standing for the bread and wine, which represent the body and blood of Christ. And three, the priesthood involved act as servants to the community, offering the meal following the model of Christ who comes as a servant. This understanding was pioneered by Community Place, an early online ministry founded by young people and engaged disciples here in Canada, who shared experiences in summer church camps and wanted to stay connected in sacred community throughout the year. Sadly, the initial response from our denominational headquarters to these innovative spiritual pioneers was negative. In fact, they were told to cease the practice immediately. That was unfortunately the state of affairs when the Beyond the Walls ministry was launched in 2015. The need to share Christ's mission in new and creative ways was evident, and our community was faced with the prospect of trying to grow the body of Christ while simultaneously obeying policy guidelines that required us to eliminate the church's central sacrament from our worship. As a congregation, we spent many months in prayerful discernment. We devoted our weekly Sunday school hour to considering the history of the sacrament through the centuries, 
we considered how it had historically been practiced in this congregation. For example, past use of the common cup for the wine and alternative ways that it could be practiced, such as reading the combined prayer for the bread and the wine. We considered the essentials of communion and concluded there was nothing theologically presenting us from sharing this sacrament together online. We wrote up the results of our discernment and sent the report to the World Church Theology Team. The theology team acting on their own timeline later issued recommendations to the denomination that online communion be authorized. After a church-wide discernment, new regulations were implemented in the fall of 2019, allowing us to share together the sacrament of the Lord's Supper on Beyond the Walls for the first time in October of that year. This was immediately a blessing for disciples in remote locations or with mobility or health issues that had prevented them from gathering to share communion in person. Once again, the central sacrament of the body of Christ was restored to our worship. That the new regulations were in place just six months prior to lockdowns necessitated by the COVID-19 epidemic illustrates the way in which the body of Christ, discerning together as a prophetic people, can serve to extend blessings far beyond our reach as individuals. We are grateful for the spiritual pioneers whose prayerful work made possible the sacred meal we will share together this day. As we learn about the living church, we seek to develop in our discipleship and our ability to fulfill Christ's mission on earth. Hello and happy Sunday or Monday morning, wherever you are. Oh my goodness, it is amazing to be with you in so many different ways, mostly because I just get really excited every time that we get to worship together, but also because I have a computer that's working again after we crashed <laughs> the middle of our spiritual practice moment last week. So if you were with us last week and you shared in the after chat spiritual practice moment, I am so sorry. I wish that we humans had greater control over technology. Sometimes they just get tired and that computer said, I've had enough worship, I'm done. <laughs> So we have a different system set up here and I ask for a little grace and understanding because everything's a little bit different. So I didn't individually say hi to each of you today because one reason is the mouse works a little bit different. I'm still getting used to that part. But the other part is the font is about this big and no amount of my glasses is working to magnify it. So you're going to see my forehead a lot during the after chats today. But regardless, how wonderful it is that we are together. If this is your first time coming to the late edition, hello, I am Noel Gafka. You are with me in central Michigan. And we are truly a global community that is live right now from Honduras to Singapore to Scotland, to Canada, to the US and beyond. How exciting we have representation in almost every part of the world. I mean, before I get to say hello to you, because there is so many, we are on a two-page day. It's exciting. I just want to make sure you know two things. One, 
Today we do get to experience communion together. So all those who are joining live today, please have some kind of emblem with you, a bread representative and a wine or a water or a soda, whatever works for you. Or Tan, I think I saw a note that said you're going to have McGriddles for communion today. I like it. <laughs> That's fantastic. We'll do that in just a little bit. The second thing is we do have an after chats moment. It's not our super secret special guest. That is next week. You're not going to want to miss this. I say this every time because they just keep getting better and better. No offense to the one that was just before, but it's exciting. You're going to want to make sure that you are here next week for our super secret special guest. But today, We've got something planned, and I have a computer that's not going to crash on us. Ah, praise God. All right, let's do some hellos first on my list, only because you said hi first. Melinda Swanson, hello from Michigan. Barbara Crompton, hello to you. We have Wednesday Jones, my friend. It's always good to be with you. And Nicola Wood, I want lemon cream pie. Really, I do. Every time that you share in the chat what you're making, I wish it was a scratch and sniff so I could just, you know, be a part of your dinner with you every time. Anyways, Leandro, hello. It's good to be with you and with John Hamer. It's good to worship with you as well. Jeannie, my friend, hello. Oh gosh, I hope that you'll get out of the snow sometime soon. You're stuck in the blizzard. Oh my gosh. Brian Shantz, hello, Tan. Hello to you. As always, thank you for your generosity. You make this possible so that we can continue to share and worship from around the world. Thank you for your generosity. We also have David and Jackie Mueller and Katie Mueller is with us as well. Hello, hello. Kevin in Scotland, hello to you. We have Daniel Leon again. You were with us in the earlier edition today, too. Sensational to be with you, Daniel. Caroline Griffin, hello. And Debbie, Carol. I'm so sorry, Debbie, if it's Carell or Carol. I, I'm just happy you're here. Hello there, too, Debbie. We have Donna McVeigh, Adam Euchre, and we have Roman in Salt Lake City. Roman, thank you for all that you are doing on Discord to keep us connected. Thank you. You are the reason that we've got Discord going. Mary Welton, hello. Ellen Young, hello to you. Safe Space Cafe. Ah, I just love saying that. Hello to you, wherever you are joining us from. I'm going to check back over really quick to see if anyone has said, Jeff, you're here. It's good to be with you, Jeff. I see a note from you. See if anyone else has popped in. Since I said hello, I don't see any other hellos, but that doesn't mean that we don't know you're there. The chat's not for everyone, but your spirit is still felt. Pearl, hello, Pearl. I see you popping in there. It is amazing to worship with you today. And I'm gonna take us back to a little bit of worship. I'm gonna see you again soon when we get to share in communion together. So again, have some emblems at the ready and it'll be just a little bit and I'll see you again very soon. And so we go now live to Raytown, Missouri where Holly Cross is here to read today's lectionary scripture. Holly, we are delighted to have you with us on Beyond the Walls. Thank you so much, John. I am very grateful to be here to help. Our scripture continues the reading we began in the call to worship. Now, in verses 20 through 29, Jesus and the disciples share the Last Supper and initiate the sacrament of communion. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12 disciples. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed 
and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Raytown, we head over to Lee's Summit, Missouri, where our dear friend Linda Booth is here to share today's communion message. Linda, we are delighted to have you back with us today on Beyond the Walls. Thank you, dear friend. What significance does a Passover meal shared centuries ago with 13 men, Jesus and his 12 disciples, what does it have to do in the life of the church in the 21st century? Here's why I think it has dramatic implications for us today and in the future. In communion or the Lord's Supper, God still makes visible the invisible realm of the Spirit. When we take the bread and wine within us, there's still the potential that we will be marked again in Christ's image and fed by Christ's hands. God's purposes can continue through us. As we eat and drink together, the Spirit unites us with God, with one another, and with all of God's creation. It forms us into a powerful movement of people sent into the world to make a new reality of justice, peace, love, and safety for all God's children. Years ago, I served as the Director of Community Relations for one of the largest school districts in the state of Kansas in the United States. Part of my role was to serve on boards of directors and help nonprofits with their public relations. One such organization was Temporary Lodging for Children, which provided short-term home and emotional and physical support to children and youth whose lives were in turmoil. To support a fundraising campaign, leaders asked me to help with a promotional video. I had the opportunity to sit with several children and teenagers, hear their stories, and interview them on camera for the video. One olive-skinned girl with flowing jet black hair rarely looked up as I talked with her before her videotaping. This 13-year-old had a tablet in front of her and on a white piece of paper, she was creating with a black ballpoint pen what looked like an intricate chain. To try to get her comfortable before the interview, I asked her about her creation. She pointed to one line in the bottom corner of the page and said, look here, this is one person. I looked more closely and there was a long, small stick figure, line for the body, circle for the head, 
or lines extending to represent arms and legs. See how this person is connected to the next one and the next one and the next one, she said. As I gazed at what I thought was a chain, I saw maybe 100 stick people joined together, hand to hand, winding around and filling the paper. I was amazed that this series of stick people formed such an intricate design. I was even more amazed when the teenager explained the significance of these connected figures. You see, she said, it starts with one person reaching out to another and to help another person. Then that person holds out a hand to the next and it goes on and on until the world is a safe place for everyone. In a way, I believe Community of Christ's Inspired Council, found in section 164 of the Doctrine and Covenants, paragraph 4c, recognizes the power for justice and peace, which is released when we join hands to make a better world in this inspired council, we promise that, and I quote, the Lord's Supper can spiritually form the church community into a true and living expression of the life, sacrifice, resurrection, and continuing presence of Christ. Inherent in this sacrament is the divine call for the church to be a sacramental offering for the blessing, healing, and peace of creation. At the Passover meal centuries ago, Jesus took a loaf of bread, blessed it, and gave it to his 12 disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus was trying to prepare his disciples, telling them that after the Passover, after this shared meal, he would be handed over to be crucified. But in the midst of their concerns for the future, they shared communion and the yet to be realized promise of resurrection. The promise of resurrection continues in the life of the church in the 21st century. As we share the bread and the wine, it's up to us to accept the offer of resurrection in our everyday lives. I went back to Bay La Battery Community of Christ Congregation in the state of Alabama in the USA. It was in 2005, soon after the water from Hurricane Katrina filled and destroyed their church home. Pastor Danny gave me a testimony tour of the newly renovated church. He shared stories of God's presence, of Christ's peace in the midst of this disaster, of a resurrection within the church members and the community. As we stood in the sanctuary, he told of standing on a ladder, painting a column by the baptismal font. He was weary, bone tired, emotionally and physically. And God spoke to him in a mystical way saying, why are you doing this? He said he climbed down from the ladder and proclaimed, for the glory of God. As the words left his mouth, he said the spirit blew like a mighty wind and filled that sacred space that had once been filled with mud and water. Moments after he finished his story, the children began arriving. Beautiful children, little ones and teenagers 
children whose parents had been born in Laos and Cambodia, parents who made their living working on the shrimp boats. Not a few children arrived, but 30 to 40. For out of the hurricane disaster came resurrection in that congregation as the Bi Labatry congregation shared with the children who were seeking sanctuary. The children found Christ's abiding peace in the love of these humble people who took their hands and shared with them. And so that evening, Jesus ate a final Passover meal with his followers. Jesus spoke the words that are repeated in slightly varying forms in Christian celebrations of the Lord's Supper. He shared what's often called the words of institution. This is my body. This is my blood. The final meal that Jesus shared with his disciples has multiple meanings. It connects backward to the public ministry of Jesus and forward to his death and resurrection. Jesus's last supper was to be the first supper of the future. The same is true in the life of the church in the 21st century. The Lord's Supper continues as a visible witness of loving Christian fellowship and shared remembrance of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. The Lord's Supper gives members the opportunity to reaffirm the covenant they made in the waters of baptism. The Lord's Supper encourages reconciliation and the healing of strange rela strained relationships. The Lord's Supper unites us in committing together to the church's mission of promoting communities of generosity, justice, and peacefulness. Jesus shared bread and wine. He had shared a meal many times in his public ministry. During these meals, he often taught lessons about a kingdom of justice and peace. He was criticized because of whom he chose to eat with. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? The scribes and Pharisees ask. There was a sharp social boundaries, and Jesus ate with undesirables, the marginalized, society's outcasts. This was simply not done by a man in Jesus's social position. But Jesus included anyone and everyone, sharing lessons, love, and spiritual food. He also shared real food, for bread mattered to the poor that Jesus included at the table. For his peasant audience, bread, enough food for the day, was about survival. At the Last Supper, Jesus used four verbs, took, blessed, broke, and gave. Similar words describe the feeding of the 4,000 with a few loaves and fishes. He took seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. When we remember this story, we're amazed by the multiplication of a few loaves and fishes. But I'm beginning to understand that this story is for those of, it, of us living in the 21st century. For the story is also about distribution to the poor, to those who are hungry and in need. The food passes through the hands of Jesus as the incarnation of divine justice and reminds us that as Christ's ambassadors of peace, we're called to abolish poverty. We're called to be a people of reconciliation and healing of the spirit. 
We're called to establish God's justice for all people. In 1998, I was ordained as one of the first two women apostles in Community of Christ and began working full-time for the church. I soon learned that then presiding Bishop Larry Norris was very proud of his firstborn granddaughter. Meeting started with his sharing the most recent photographs of this adorable child. He took every opportunity to tell us about her. And I'd go home and tell my husband, Doug, you know I love children, but I don't understand Larry. He's, well, he's just goofy. I didn't understand until June 26, 2000, when our family gathered at a local hospital to await the birth of our first grandson. We already loved him and had named him Brock. After many hours of waiting, our son Bart came walking down the hallway dressed in green hospital scrubs. He was beaming. Brock's here. He weighs 10 pounds, four ounces. He's a keeper. Would you like to meet him? Of course, we enthusiastically followed him to a room where Brock was tightly wrapped in a blanket. We gathered around looking down at this big brute of a baby. And as I looked at this precious new life, I became, well, goofy. A passionate love flowed through me. It was as if my body vibrated with divine love and the spirit touched me, allowing me to glimpse and feel a portion of God's love for each person. A love that God shares and gives abundantly. And we're to generously share God's love as well. In the loaf of bread and the cup of wine, Jesus distributes a shared meal communion, a great sacramental symbol of God's love and call to establish Zion, the peaceable kingdom for all people. We share communion here so that we can go and share with others. Through the sharing of communion, Jesus made a final attempt to bring his disciples through his execution to resurrection, through his death to new life. And we, like them, are invited to move through our own struggles to resurrection, to new life. In this holy meal, we recognize that it is about bread for the world, God's justice against human injustice. It's about befriending those on society's margins. It's about reaching out and inviting them into a holy, life-giving communion of fellowship. Over the years, I've been three times to the Portland Community of Christ congregation in the state of Oregon in the USA. The first was to speak at its peace colloquy, which engaged community members. The congregation was small, but enthusiastic about justice and peacemaking. The second visit was to speak at a homecoming celebration. The congregation invited pastors, church members from other congregations and neighbors. I had several responsibilities that weekend. The first was to welcome participants at the end of a talent show. Like most talent shows, there were lots of children playing the piano, singing, dancing, and doing magic tricks. And during the show, I rehearsed in my mind an appropriate welcome for the 200 plus people gathered in the gymnasium. When it was my turn, I began to speak 
my prepared welcome, but instead found myself telling the story of Jonna, a woman who had made her living as a prostitute. A short man named Cliff had shared his witness of God's love for her as they leaned against the tailgate of his truck. Jonna went home with new hope for her life. In the brief version of this story, I told of her transformation and baptism. As I told that story, I had an out-of-body experience, arguing with myself. I said to myself, this is not an appropriate story for this audience. Stop. Go back to your original welcome. But I was in the middle of the story, and it was too late. I couldn't go back. I finished with a welcome to the assembled audience, and I was a little embarrassed as I stepped off the stage. Waiting there for me was a tall, ebony-skinned woman who grabbed me in a tight hug. My head was caught between her neck and shoulder, and she was crying. She kept repeating, that's my story. You told my story. When she left, I found Pastor Murray and I asked him about the woman. Her name was Charlotte. She'd lived a rough life and was out on a pass for good behavior from a drug rehabilitation center. He said that I'd seen two of her children in the talent show one played the piano, the other a clarinet. Members of the congregation had been taking care of Charlotte's children and were paying for their music lessons, etc. Naturally, I wanted to hear why Charlotte and her children were at the talent show and how their lives became linked to the Portland congregation. Here's why. A teacher in the congregation got concerned when one of Charlotte's daughters was absent from school for several days. She inquired in the school office. Someone told her Charlotte had been evicted from her apartment. She and her two daughters and son were living in a park. The teacher began to pray for her student and the more she prayed, the more she knew she needed to do something. So on a Saturday morning, she went looking in Portland parks for Charlotte and her children. When she found them sitting on a blanket on the grass, she sat down with them. She listened to Charlotte's story. Charlotte's life was a mess. She had no place to go and no family to help her and her children. The young teacher told Charlotte she had been praying for her and her family. She boldly offered to care for Charlotte's children if Charlotte went into drug rehab. Charlotte agreed. For several months, the caring teacher and congregation had been loving and nurturing Charlotte's children, and they were thriving. I was impressed by the compassion of the teacher and congregation. And I asked Pastor Murray to keep me posted on what happened to this family. When I got home, I started getting voice messages from Pastor Murray on my office phone in the temple. The first one shared that Charlotte was out again on drug rehab with a pass, had been invited to church and someone had given her a Bible and prayed with her. There were several more messages. Charlotte successfully completed the drug rehab program. Members of the congregation helped her find an apartment and a job. And then an excited message from Pastor Murray. Yesterday was Pentecost Sunday, and Charlotte and two of her children were baptized and confirmed. Two years later, I was invited back to the Portland congregation to ordain Pastor Murray an evangelist, a minister of blessing. The congregation was filled. I knew Murray's family, 
and I recognized that most of the people packed into the pews were not his relatives. When I leaned over to the presider to ask who all these people were, he said that Charlotte had reached out to the people in drug rehab and on the streets. She told them about a community that loved unconditionally, and she invited them to come and see for themselves. And here they were, an assortment of people whose lives were being transformed through the communion of loving fellowship, the hands of ordinary people just reaching out and loving them unconditionally. This is our first Lord's Supper of the future. Jesus offers not simply food to the hungry, but himself to all. This is my body. This is my blood. The revelation of God's message of love for the world. God, through Jesus Christ, recognizes our great needs, forgives our sins, and provides food for our bodies and souls. As you reach for the sacred symbols of God's amazing grace, you become part of God's message of love for the world. You are prepared and equipped to go forth as Christ's disciples, sharing the communion you have received, sharing Christ with others so that those who are hungry and thirsty may yet be filled. At this time, all who are able, 
are invited to come to the table and to share in a meal together. Now in different faith traditions, we might have different understandings of what that meal might be. And that's okay. But here at this table, all are welcomed with no ifs, ands, or buts. All are invited to participate. However you are able, if your body allows you to, you are invited to kneel. And if that's not okay, you are invited to bow your head if you would like as I offer a blessing. Or even if that's not okay, if you want to look at a wall nearby, that is okay as well. But however you like to pray, will you join with me as I offer this combined blessing on the bread and the wine so we might eat and drink together. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son, and witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Now once more, let us continue in worship together. And I'll see you back here very soon. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my Go forth with the words of reassurance given by the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth in his second letter to them, chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many 
are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Amen. So I invite you to join in our many activities throughout the week. Our Tuesday night lecture series resumes. Our daily Lenten meditation happens every morning and our Community of Christ 101 moves to its new night of Thursday. Meanwhile, stay with us after the postlude. If you're here in the late edition, you'll be able to chat with Noel. And if you're here with me in the early edition, uh, we will chat with our ministers. Hello again. As always, it's so good to be with you. Oh, just trying to click on the right things here. I'm just happy that I have a computer that hasn't crashed yet. <laughs> okay, so we have a unique thing. Today is our community building day. Next week is our super secret special guest. And then the week after that is our prayer day together. But we are doing something uh, together we haven't done before. And I'm going to invite all of you to participate. Even if that means that typing something into the chats is scary. Because that's okay. There, there are some of us that join together that uh, are weary about other people knowing that we're here. And that's absolutely okay. Like I said before, we know that you're here because we can feel your spirit. But at home, even if you don't want to type into the chat, have a piece of paper with you, or even if that's not an option, to just participate by letting uh, the activity 
pop up in your mind and whatever I invite you to do, I still want you to participate at home. But if you do feel comfortable typing in the chat good news for today's activity, you do not have to make sentences. Woohoo! <laughs> For some of us, if it is still Sunday, it's the weekend still, we don't want to have to think. But for others who it is Monday morning or the wee hours of Monday morning, we still don't want to think. So not having to make sentences is a good thing. And I don't want you to think at all. Yes, I'm going to say that again. I don't want you to think at all. Because sometimes what happens is when we start thinking, well, then we have all of these other things that can sometimes get into our head and conflict with the original idea or answer or picture, whatever it may be, that pops up when we start doubting that. And we start trying to reshape that. And so I don't want you to do that. I want the very first thing, as long as it's family friendly, the very first thing that pops into mind, I want you to put that into the chat when I invite you to. So this is what our after chats activity is gonna look like. I am gonna say random, things. And the very first thought has to be one word, unless it's something that requires two words. Let's say uh, I say farm, and immediately you think pole barn. Pole barn is two words technically, so that's allowed. But again, no sentences. The very first thing that pops into mind, I want you to put it into the chat. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to collect all of those and we're going to put it together into something that I get to share with you in the near future. Because it's going to take me a moment to collect every answer for all of these things that I'm going to invite you to reflect on. So again, I'm gonna say one thing, have your cursor at the ready, just put it right in the chat option, have your fingers poised, or if you're on your phone, have your thumbs at the ready. And as soon as I say something like, let's, let's say I say tree, and you might type leaves or squirrel or birds, whatever it may be, be ready to type that in the chat and then, we will compile it into something in just a moment. Now, as always, oh, Jeannie, I see your note that says that you're missing the instructions. Did you get them? <laughs> Type one word to uh, whatever is the first thing that pops into your mind when I say something. I just used the example if I said tree, if the first thing you think of is leaves, type leaves, or squirrel, or birds, or acorns or the beaver that I'm gonna catch this summer while I'm at camp, I, what, whatever it may be. You just type it into the chat and we don't need sentences. Okay, so we're gonna start with something easy and then we'll get into the other things. I'm gonna check really quick. Anyone have questions on what our activity is? Okay. All right, are you ready? The first thing I'm gonna say is cake. So what is the first thing that comes to mind when I say cake? This is just our example. So go ahead and type it in. I wanna make sure that you're still there and that you're ready to go. So what is the first thing that you think of when I say cake? For me, it's lemon, because that's what we talked about earlier with Nicola and her cake. <laughs> she says, yum. Yes, Does it, it doesn't have to be enough chocolate. Yep, 
frosting yes birthday audrey that's awesome icing from wednesday i love it let me pop over to facebook facebook birthday caroline says birthday absolutely see you got it these are wonderful keep bringing them in what else do you think of birthday yes carrot cream cheese icing eunice i like the way you think <laughs> i love it carrot cake yes thank you music man birthday wonderful yes that is exactly how we are going to do this activity together wonderful if i move on to something and you are still trying to type your response to the first thing that i said keep going pearl says pie <laughs> i love it some of us are not cake people i can tell you that's why there's other desserts in the world so that we can still celebrate outstanding okay here we go the very first official one that I am going to invite you to share a one word response on, unless it has to be two, is comfort. Comfort. What is the first thing that pops to your mind when you think of comfort? Heidi, your note just popped up about Noelle's gluten-free creations. <laughs> Audrey, I see your response about food. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you. Comfort food. We've got peace, fuzzy blanket, home, fuzzy socks, safe, welcome, easy chair. Absolutely. Warmth, C of C. Yes. Hug, slippers, safe. Oh, yes, absolutely. Fuzzy blanket over on Facebook side. Caroline, thank you so much for that yeah nestling oh john thank you thank you so much for that woohoo absolutely anything else what do you think of when i say comfort i'm gonna say pillow except for right now because i really need to buy a new one Ooh, ooh. I see your message there, Caroline. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna answer that right now. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait and see what we come up with. All right. The next thing I want to, or rather the next word I want to put out there for you to think about and then to share the very first thing that comes to mind is spring. Spring. What is the first thing that pops into mind when you think of spring? Oh, Wednesday, I see your notes about comfort, comforter, and a title for Jesus. Absolutely, I like those. All right, spring. Ooh, Adam says tulips. Baby animals, yes, summer, yes, that is coming. Easter, woohoo! Fruit, beaches, flowers, flowers, flowers. We got lots of flowers coming up. Flower and shrubs. Spring is resurrection. Oh, oh, that's powerful right there. Spring into action, John. I like that. I like. <laughs> Leandro says my taxes are overdue. <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> and Jeannie says mud. Yes. Ooh, World Conference is normally in the springtime. Absolutely. Renewal says Caroline over on Facebook. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Surfing. Woohoo. Now, some of our Canadian friends are having a hard time probably processing spring with all this snow that you are getting. It's still winter up there. While well, some of us are like, I'm planting already. 
outstanding. Woohoo! Okay, next thing I want you to think about is the very first thought when you hear love. What is the very first thing that comes to mind when you hear love? That can be hard for some people. All right, while you are typing, my friend Diet Coke and I are gonna have a moment. Ooh, Heidi says Christ, yes. Peanut butter cookies, yes, I, I love those too. God, Jesus, Valentine's Day, which was just a couple of weeks away in the other direction. Ooh, Jeannie says forever. Pearl says God, absolutely. Family, Audrey says God is love. Thank you for that. Ooh, Caroline says family, wonderful. I appreciate that. What else do you think of when you hear love? Ooh, Music Man says kisses. John says family. Eunice says my grandson and my kids. Yes. Wonderful. Jeannie says hugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else comes to mind? Community. Ooh, Wednesday, I like that for sure. There's such good answers. Yay. Come back over. Music Man says faith. Yeah. I agree with you there. Hmm. This is a good one. We got lots of answers for that one. Okay. Acceptance. Oh, oh, that's powerful. Absolutely. You'll definitely find that here always for sure. Okay. Next one, if you're still typing on this one, please make sure that you still send it in. Next one is the Holy Spirit. What's the first thing that pops to mind? One word, unless it has to be two. When I say Holy Spirit. Okay. We're gonna let these answers come in. There's always just a little bit of a delay, which is absolutely okay. Here they come. Nicholas says mystery. Ooh, yes. Wednesday says fire. Music man says deliverance. Eunice says my co-pilot. I like it. Adam says inspiration. Jeannie says still small voice. Melinda says speaking in tongues. I'm gonna pop over to Facebook real quick. See if there's an answer here to Holy Spirit. I'll pop back over in just a second. Leandro says oneness. Jackie and David says living within us. I like these answers. Of course, you're, you're never gonna hear me say I don't like your answers, but I do. I do like these. Amazing. Pearl says comforter, yes. Music Man says prayer, oh. I love it all. Oh, we've got Ruha, which is wind or breath. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Jeannie says, always there. Mm. Yeah, even when it can be hard to recognize. Absolutely. Good answers. Okay. Music Man says forgiveness. I like it. I like it. 
Okay, here comes our next one. If you're still typing, please make sure that you still send this one in. The next one I have for you is Lent. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Lent? Aside from Fat Tuesday and in some places, a lot of punchkis which I don't get to have because there's lots of gluten packed into that. But what do you think of when you think of Lent? It is a season that we are in right now. Ooh, Adam says preparation. Nicholas says meditation. Heidi says fasting. Music man, you say giving. I like it. Pearl says giving up. Wednesday, fasting and prayer. Thank you. <laughs> Nicholas says, second thought is no chocolate. <laughs> I, I like it. Yes, for some people give up things. Eunice says, getting prepared. Yeah, for sure. Caroline says, 40 days. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Jackie or Davis says preparation for sure. Mm hmm. Craig says starving. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. <laughs> you just had some really good cookies the other day, by the way. <laughs> so, so the picture looked. Music Man says motivation. I like that. I really like that. Melinda says Easter. Yeah. Wednesday says suffering. Mm -hmm. And temptation. Yes. Those are all things that I can picture with you and think of with you with that. Absolutely. Okay. Next one we have is God. What do you think of when I say God? First thing that comes to mind. We only have one left after this. Ooh, Music Man says salvation. Thank you. Oh, Melinda, I see your correction there. Easter next for Lent. I see that there. Yes. What else do you think of? First thing, one word, I say God. Oh, Jeannie says unconditional love. Music Man says repentance. Nicholas says creation. Pearl says 1,000 years. Adam says beginning and end. Eunice, ever present. Melinda says Father Wednesday, all knowing. Let me pop over to Facebook here, see if there's Anything over here? Oh, my mouse just decided to take a journey. Let's come back here. <laughs> Caroline, I see your answer there to Lent. <laughs> you said Arby's fish sandwich season. <laughs> that is so true. So true. When I used to be able to still eat the fish sandwiches uh, before I, I found out about my, my gluten allergy, Oh my goodness, when it was Lent, I was so excited because yes, Arby's broke out <laughs> the fish sandwich. <laughs> and I see your answer for the next one. Uh, to God, which you put in love. Wonderful, thank you. Coming back over, uh, I see response from Jackie and David. This is all powerful. Music man says lament. Oh, oh. That's very powerful. Mm. I like that answer for our Facebook side. If Since you can't see, Wednesday says, what I said says a lot about me when I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> John says, two for six. <laughs> as long as you get curly fries, John. As long as you get curly fries. <laughs> what else do you think of? 
when I say God, all right, our very last one for today, and then I'll tell you exactly what we're doing with all of these answers. Our very last one is resurrection. What is the one word that comes to mind when you think about resurrection? Oh, there's still some answers coming in from the original, uh, or not the original, but the previous word, which was God, and, and so I want to make sure that I share those. We have heavenly parent, eternal source, divine. Yes, thank you. Okay, our resurrection ones are coming in, and I see uh, Judgment Day from Music Man. Thank you. Life from Heidi, Death Defeated from Jeannie, Renewal from Adam, Roman says Wholeness, I like all of those. Audrey says hope. I like that. Eunice says new life. Wednesday says renewal. Nicola, fresh beginnings. Melinda says hallelujah. Indeed. Indeed. Jackie and David says new life. Pearl says going home. Thank you. Wednesday says to be made new. I'm going to pause here real quick, jump over to Facebook. Oh, Caroline says redemption. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me pop right back over to YouTube here. We have Judgment Day and Promise. Those are coming in just now. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. New Soul. Ooh. Ooh, I like that too. Good things here. And if you weren't comfortable with the chat, but you still participated, I hope that at home or work or wherever you were, you had a chance to be able to go through these and share your answers with yourself, as well as participating here. Adam says hope for resurrection. Absolutely. I like that very much. Transformation. Woo! That's good stuff. We got lots of responses coming in here. I'm going to pop back over to Facebook. All right. Wonderful. Awakening. Thank you, John. Yeah, for sure. Second chance. Thank you, Melinda. So while you're still thinking about this, let me just share one reflection. How neat is it that we were all able to share our unique vision for these, these different words? And some of us came up with the same thing. Some of us, uh, there was maybe three or four that had the same response. But how beautiful it was that we were able, in our own words, to share an example, an image, an idea, a belief, a knowing about something. And we all had it in common. We were all able in some way to ponder what these things meant to us. And they might've been a little bit different but it's beautiful that we could just now share together in a way that connects us literally around the world. So what I'm going to do with this is after our time, we have the ability to come back and to collect these responses. And I'm going to create a prayer from what you just shared. 
And you might have noticed the Lenten theme leading into our Easter theme coming up soon. And next week, even though we have our super secret special guest, I'm going to share with you this prayer that we created from all of those things and all of those examples and images and ideas that we came up with. And I hope that you will be able to see how we can still pray together, even though it might sound a little bit different, or the image might be just tweaked a little bit from what you originally thought, because someone else had the same vision, but it might be just a little bit different. And then I hope you can see how powerful it is to be able to have our own understandings of who God is, of who the Holy Spirit is, of what resurrection means to us, what it means to love, and what the season of spring brings, and how we find comfort together. Oh my goodness, how powerful it will be. And I thank you for sharing, because it gets a little vulnerable. Anytime that I ask you to share something, it gets a little bit vulnerable. So thank you for your courage to share. Oh, I just see your note there, Music Man. You, well, you didn't miss anything because the super secret special guest, I have not shared at all who this guest is so you're just gonna have to come back next week and see who our special guest guest is once a month we have somebody uh, from the community or outside of the community i'm not going to give away anything at all even though you guys guessed it last week or last week last month rather that's okay you get one <laughs> And then that person gets to share about who they are and how they are connected to Beyond the Walls. And it's kind of fun to see the face behind the name or even if maybe their name doesn't pop up, but you know that they might have something to do with something with Beyond the Walls. It's really awesome to be able to meet each other. All right. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And we made it through the entire after chat so we didn't crash. <laughs> Until we meet again, as always, know how much you are loved. And I will never grow tired of telling you that. Know how much you are loved. And I look forward to our time of coming together once again. Have an amazing week. I will miss you until then. But hopefully, if you are on Discord, I will chat with you sometime soon in the next couple of days. Have a fantastic rest of your day.